don't know if you know, but we we covered the movie Pulp Fiction probably within the last twenty episodes on this yeah, show. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But uh, did you know the the wallet that Jules has in the movie, the one that says "Bad Motherfucker" on it? Mm-hmm. Do you know that's actually Quentin Tarantino's? Like that was his real wallet. It's still his wallet. That kind of fits for Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> that tracks. Apparently, he picked it up. Uh, because it was a reference to the 1971 film Shaft, which later on Samuel L. Jackson would go to play the titular character. Nice. Or the character that inspired the wallet, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Kind of a fun little thing. But uh, welcome to the Drive Back Podcast. My name is Garrett. And I'm Adrian. And today we've got a franchise fever, which is the first one we've had in a while. This is kind of nice. It has been a bit. So we thought we'd go in and do one that is getting a new installment uh, in August of this year, 2022. We're going to be taking a look at the Predator franchise. Um, so, Adrian, what's what's your uh, what's your history with the? Or actually, first off, what is a franchise fever? Uh, I know. Sorry, whiplash. <laughs> uh, a franchise fever is where we consider a franchise to be anything that is two or more movies. Uh, included in the same series. So anything like, for example, National Treasure would, as of right now, would not be a franchise. That is just two films, but anything with three or more, like Fast and Furious or the Predator series, for example, or the Alien franchise, like those things we consider franchises. That is absolutely correct. And as you said, we're doing the Predator franchise today. Uh, we got four films to talk about today. Um, so that's going to be pretty good. We did not, in, in neither the Alien series nor this one, did we cover Alien vs. Predator or Aliens vs. Predator Requiem because they are not canon. Uh, yeah, either. exactly. In both franchises, they are not considered part of the franchise. <laughs> uh, even though there is a blatant uh, Easter egg in the second Predator movie, but we'll get there when we talk about that. Um, but we'll probably leave the AVP movies for a separate back-to-back episode. Um, yeah. Because I think that... Either that or I think we should really do a commentary for the, for both of them because they're, they're fun to make fun of. <laughs> <laughs> That's I really the, like the first one. I mean, the first one is enjoyable. Don't get me wrong; it's still not a good movie. It's definitely like a, a like a it's uh, campy. It's campy. It's your your guilty pleasure kind of a thing. The it's second one, like, it's like King Kong vs. Godzilla. Like it's, the purpose yeah. is to put these two things together. <laughs> exactly. And the second one, we'll, yeah, we'll just have to wait for that one to talk about it. There's a lot to talk about, but. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Predator, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Adrian, what is your experience with the Predator franchise? So my initial experience with it is a little bit of a story. Uh, I first watched it when I, I don't know my age, but someone showed me Predator, so I went home and I told my dad about this really cool movie I'd seen about an alien and how cool it was and all that. So he goes, oh, well, I have all the alien movies, like, do you want to watch the second one? And I went, sure. And he, so he puts on the second Alien movie. Now, you might have noticed that I switched over from Predator to Alien. So he showed me, we started up the second Alien film, which is a horror movie. And I was much too young. I was very old enough to watch, like, an action movie like The Predator, where there's, like, an alien that runs around and it's all action. So about ten minutes in, he looked over at me and he goes, does this seem familiar? And I went, "Mm mm-mm. Like, I... I have not seen this, and <laughs> I ended up having nightmares for like two weeks after that because I was so horrified. And then later he found out he called that friend's dad, and it was like, no, we, yeah, he watched Predator, and my dad was like, ah, uh, that, <laughs> that makes sense because he shit his pants when he watched Alien 2. <laughs> that's, that, that sounds like Martin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I like, I... For me, like it was, it wasn't something I watched as a kid. I, I think I watched it more like early high school, maybe late middle school, um, just because it was always something that people had talked about, and it was always brought up in jokes and movie books and stuff like that. And you always wondered where that cool looking, you know, outfit came from. So watched it, and uh, you know, the the rest is kind of history after that point. Um, but there is one movie I or, yeah, one movie I watched for the first time here, which is Predator Two. Which I had I had never seen, but I thought I did. It's one of those one of those movies where like you hear so much about it in some capacity or another, but you haven't actually seen it. So, I, I am guilty of that all the time. Yeah, exactly. So, but let's go ahead and jump right into the franchise uh, with Predator. Big spoiler alert! 
Uh, the first film is Predator, released in 1987. It was directed by John McTiernan and stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, and Kevin Peter Hall. A team of commandos on a mission in a Central American jungle find themselves hunted by an extraterrestrial warrior. It was nominated for one Oscar for Best Visual Effects. So, because for the time, it was pretty pretty impressive. Um, we'll go ahead. We'll start with you. Uh, this is obviously not your first time seeing it. This is a rewatch for you. Uh, with they the, all were, yeah. With the critical lens, what did you think about the original? Yeah, I still think it holds up really well. I think it's a really exciting action movie with, I uh, like a ton of really good one-liners that I think nowadays you wouldn't get away with as much in a movie where literally like the entire script is. Uh, trailer quotes uh, so I think it, it's but it still holds up somehow it's part of the charm and Arnold Schwarzen- Schwarzenegger definitely does a, a really good job I mean I feel like he often plays like his own self in a lot of movies but in this one it somehow just works perfectly like I believe that he's in this scenario somehow and it just works like the whole movie is it's a little campy it's a little dated and the CGI is definitely dated, but like you said, for the time, it was incredible. And it's still fun to watch. Like, it's got a charm. So I still really like it. Yeah, it, it that's the big key, right, is the charm. And, and it has that, um, definitely. And I think upon rewatching it, you definitely pick up the, the nostalgic vibes. You pick up the charm. You pick up the fun. But I do have to say at the end of the day, it, it like, I love this movie. I own it. I want to I make that, you know, very clear. Um, but when looking through it, uh, looking at it through a critical lens, it definitely has some issues. Um, at the end of the day, it is just a bunch of sweaty dudes in the jungle firing off an excess amount of ammunition that doesn't fit into the magazines for any of those weapons. Um, and no need to reload ever, which, you know, we'll have to watch Commando at some point because that's guilty of it too. Um, like, like we said, most of the dialogue is just, it's trailer quotes. You know, and it doesn't really do anything. Um, but the movie does kick into high gear at the, in the third act. I believe the final showdown between Arnold and the Predator is legendary. Um, absolutely love it. Like when he figures out that he can't see him because of the mud. Perfect. A little bit of a spoiler. Um, but it, yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and drop a spoiler warning for Predator. Uh, Predator is available to stream on Hulu. Uh, actually, all th- all th- uh, the first three, Predator, Predator 2, and Predators, are all on Hulu, uh, whereas The Predator is only available to rent. So, just throwing that out there, because the next movie, Prey, will be on Hulu only. That's probably why they're putting them all in there. They probably pulled them in, yeah. So, um, but yeah, getting back into it, spoiler alert dropped. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, I have such a, like, a, it's, I don't want to say it's a guilty pleasure, because it's more than a guilty pleasure. There is a lot more here than there would be in a Guilty Pleasure movie. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> like, like, hey, you're bleeding. I don't have time to bleed. Like, mm-hmm. it's just it's just so... It's so macho. Like, the, the, the handshake in the beginning. Like, the, yeah. cl- the clap heard round the world as those two biceps just flex is yeah. intense. But, so what are the negatives? I, you're just saying positives. What is it? What's your critique? <laughs> no, those were positives. I'm just saying, like the, the movie itself, it's like. And don't get me wrong. We'll talk about this a little bit more when we get into Predators uh, a little bit later on. But I'm usually a huge fan of movies where they just put a group of soldiers or scientists or explorers or whatever in a remote location, and they have something that's hunting them. I I just I don't know what it is. There, it's a guilty pleasure to love all those kinds of movies. And there's movies that are worse, and there are movies that are better. I think the, the downsides for me with this movie is mostly the dialogue. Um, okay. Which is... It's kind of all ham-fisted, you know, like... Like, you know, it just doesn't really come off well uh, for a lot of the time. Um, like specifically when, like, the guys are all, like, just chatting to each other, right? Like, when they're in the helicopter, it's supposed to make us endeared to these characters... And it, it kind of doesn't. I mean, you you only get you only get you know endeared to them because they say funny things, some of which are probably not <laughs> okay by today's standards. Um, but and then just like you know, you I like it's weird. Like I'm like I'm critiquing this movie in my head, but like it it just feels like a bunch of guys in the jungle having fun, letting off blank fire, 
into the trees, and they're like, oh, we can edit something in later. Like, <laughs> okay. I, I can't, I can't, you know, disrespect the movie because it feels like they had so much fun making it. And it's the same director as Die Hard. So, which is, one, which is the best, one of the best, if not the best action movie of all time. And I, I don't know. It's just, like, again, I love this movie. It's just I have to okay. look at it a little bit more critically, a little bit more logically. Or not. You could just have fun watching a movie. <laughs> yeah, but it, it doesn't feel honest to me. Like, yes, I can still have fun watching a movie, but just because a movie is fun doesn't mean it's good. That's true. So, uh, I think that the... I think this is a very endearing movie, and it, I got really attached to the characters, and I think what worked really well for this movie is the fact that these extremely elite soldiers are afraid in the forest. Like, that, to me, made the Predators seem larger than life. I feel like a lot of movies put elite soldiers in the middle of a forest, and they are just that. They're just the macho. Like, they're not afraid of anything. And in this movie, it gets scary for them. They are very afraid of what is hunting them. Uh, and I think that really creates a sense of hum humanness to them. Like, I really get human from them. Uh, that, yeah, this is a very scary thing. Like, I, I don't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he's afraid. I should probably be very afraid of what's coming. Uh, so I really like that. And, yeah, their lines are all are all cheesy action movie quotes. But I totally think that that just adds to the Like, that's... They're all heroes. Like, they're all, in their own mind, the main character. And they all say really funny things. And, yeah, I think it's just a really heartwarming kind of engagement between all of them. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that this movie's bad by any means. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it's just that, like, <laughs> I, I, was, I forgot. I was going to make a point, And I had my point in my head while you were talking. And I completely forgot it. It happens more than you'd think. Um but like, no, oh, that's what it was. Like, like, if if this movie was trying to be serious, I would critique it much more harshly. But it knows what it's trying to be. Yeah. And just because, yeah, yes, the the acting is cheesy, the lines are cheesy, but that's the kind of movie that it is. And for being like that, it works. So it's just like, I don't know. Maybe I'm being hypocritical here. I just feel like you're not actually critiquing it. Like, you're saying it's bad, but then you're saying, but that's also what makes the movie so good. It, it's just, there are rough things about it. Like, that, True, but I think that's yeah. what makes this movie, in my opinion, that those rough things are what make historic movies historic, are those yeah. things that make a movie their own. And I'm not saying that the movie isn't endearing. It's mostly the characters, for me, is what I was getting at earlier. But, um, and, I, and I still, again, I own the movie. I love watching this movie. It's just like, there are like things about it that are rough. Movie. I, that's what I'm saying. I know you love, I feel that you love the movie. I, that's what I'm saying is the things you're, I don't feel like you're critiquing, like you don't actually not like the things you're saying you didn't like about the movie. Because then you're following it up with that you did like, that no, they I make like the I like the experience movie. of the movie as a whole, but there are parts yeah, about okay. it that I don't like. For instance, but then the those dialogue. parts, yeah. But then those parts make you like it. But like, so I kind of guess re going back to my earlier point, like this movie knows that it's it, that it's silly, but totally. there are moments when it tries to be scarier, right? To be a little bit more serious. Sort of a thriller when they thing, find yeah. the bodies in the tree, which that that vintage visual is still burned into my memory. The first time they yeah, pull crazy. the trees back, um, so like there are. The, there are the moments like that where I'm like, okay, they're trying to make it something more than what it is. And then there's a moment where, you know, yes, it's awesome, but Carl Weathers' his arm gets chopped off or shot off. And the arm still fires and the MP5 is still firing in his hand. Like, awesome. it's awesome, <laughs> but it's stupid. <laughs> like, sure. It's like stupidly fun. And I think that's maybe my main point is that I'm not saying the stupid takes over the fun. I'm just saying that the stupid is there and I'm trying to acknowledge it. Okay. Maybe that maybe that clears things up a little bit, but we still okay. got three movies to get through, and I feel like we're going to have a lot more to talk about with the uh, remaining three movies in this okay. franchise. So, anything else you want to bring up about Predator before we uh, move on? No, I just think it's a classic. These will be my final thoughts. I think it's really really fun. I think it's definitely like an old school campy action thriller that totally stands up uh, in today and is almost a fresh glass of water uh, for a lot of movies that we get nowadays. And because of that I gave it an eighty. An 80. Alrighty. 
which I feel like is low for what you were kind of saying about the movie, but and maybe I'll surprise you with a. Uh, I, I, I did think, uh, so I said, well, it's incredibly nostalgic and the final fight is legendary. At the end of the day, it's a bunch of silly quotes, sweaty guys in the jungle, and pointless wasting of ammunition. Um, that being said, still love the movie, gave it a 76. Uh, still really strong, gotta have it in the collection. It's a sci-fi staple. So, yeah. Uh, moving right along, though, we got Predator 2. Uh, released in 1990, so three years later. Uh, it was directed by Stephen Hopkins and stars Danny Glover, Gary Busey, and Maria Conchita Alonso. The Predator returns to Earth, this time to stake a claim on the war-torn streets of a dystopian Los Angeles. <laughs> Which is funny, because it says dystopian Los Angeles, like it's some sort of alternate future, yet the, the last two movies in this franchise make it canon. So... Yeah. It's just 1997 in the in the universe. That Which just, arguably, LA was dystopian already in 1997. Yeah, <laughs> some would say maybe it still is. Um, but this is my first time watching the movie, I, apparently, um, and because uh, I, I thought I had seen it. And upon my first time watching this movie, it's definitely not as good as the first one. No. Um, but there are still fun moments in this movie. Um, the the final fight is nowhere near as iconic, uh, unfortunately. Although I do like Danny Glover, I love Danny Glover as as an actor. He really reminds me of uh, his character in Die Hard, or not Die Hard. Uh, excuse me, um, Lethal Weapon. Yeah. In this movie, um, pretty much the same exact character, <laughs> actually, just with a bigger gun. Um, but. It's 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 more campy fun, but it's it's way less serious. And I think putting it when you take the the idea of this this prime hunter, this 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 creature that is so engaged in the hunt, and you take the characters and you don't put them in a in an area that is secluded, you don't put them in an area that's hard to escape that they have to fight their way out. It makes it hard to have any sort of tension. Sure. And I think that's what the biggest thing that this movie is lacking. Sure, yeah, I definitely think the remaining three lack tension for a lot of the part. Uh, but what I really liked about this one is the world building that it did for the Predators. Uh, like, the whole thing on the ship, like, I felt like it just really started to flush out some more... Just And they didn't, like, go through, like, here's the history... But they just, like, give you enough that I felt like I left the movie... Yeah, the movie's okay, uh, but I definitely felt like... felt I left feeling like I knew more about the alien. Like, I definitely felt more well-versed in their history and stuff. And for me, that's the only reason this movie gets any points for me. It's because they flushed out a little bit of the history. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so... so sounds like you don't like this movie nearly as much as the first one. Um... Was it still fun for you, though, at all? Like, was there still I, any kind of fun to have? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely somewhat interesting to always just see the Predator, because I think it's just such an interesting alien. Like you were talking about, like, seeing such an apex Predator go and hunt something is really cool. I do think it's interesting, and I'm glad they at least tried new things. Uh, like, I feel like the the next film is guilty of this, but they actually broke from the mold of the first one and made a sequel like this to me is a real sequel to the first one it's like here's a continuation and it's something different and here it is and for that i give them a lot of points for trying that and arguably it is cool to see the predator hunt in a different landscape like if you're mm -hmm. such an apex you should be able to hunt anywhere not just in a rural forest where there's only one moving living thing <laughs> like i yeah. feel it's nice to be able like multiple heat signatures, concrete that they have to look through, like stuff that's just different. Uh, so for that, I did like it. Like, I liked the hunt of it all, but the rest of it is pretty average, if not mediocre, uh, in terms of just, like, the way that the movie's done and shot. It just doesn't feel very good. Uh, and, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I get it's, it. It's campy fun. I, I would say it hasn't quite hit guilty pleasure status. But I think no. it's, it's 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 one that I would I would rewatch to probably make fun of, uh, or sure. just to like have fun. We like we we should totally do a commentary on Predator Two. <laughs> the, sure. the fact that there's a sniper rifle scope on a Desert Eagle makes no sense at all. Um, 
but yeah, I think none of the characters are especially interesting. You got to have, you know, the late Bill Paxton as the the weirdo that has a heart of gold and sa- ends up sacrificing himself. Like mm-hmm. basically the same character as he was in Aliens. Um, but it is really interesting. I did want to talk about the Easter egg. Obviously, when they're in the ship at the end of the movie and you're seeing the trophy wall and yep. you see the alien skull. Yeah. Which I'm sure like for a lot of fans that were watching uh, the movie, their minds are blown, right? They're like, Oh my gosh, there's an alien skull. It's confirmed that they're in the same universe, even though it's been well established in Canon that aliens weren't around or the xenomorphs weren't around until what? Like 2200, 2300, whenever, uh, yeah, yeah. David, whenever David makes them. Um, so, there's no way that that could have happened in 1997. Uh, so, unfortunately, it's just a fun Easter egg. It's not canon, but um, definitely a cool moment. And when he hands him the, the flintlock pistol, that's awesome. It well, th- tosses it to him. Yeah. Very like, ridiculous throw <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you only move, you're going to move so much in those latex rubber outfits. Just, that's a <laughs> weapon. Like, <laughs> that's, I still thought it was ridiculous that he's just like, hmm. Huh. And just like literally like half throws it at him like, oh, what a moment. <laughs> but, I, but I just, I love how there's like this idea of a lineage of humans that have been able to withstand the Predators. And that when we, you get more into that with the third film, yeah. uh, Predators, which we'll talk about next. But it's just so interesting to have that dynamic that like, oh, you bested one of us. You're cool. Like, yeah, you, that's literally all you get is like a, thanks for playing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's literally like Jigsaw coming out at the end of Saw, like, you made it through the game. And you're like, okay, cool. And you just get a flintlock that no one makes any supplies for in a dystopian Los Angeles. You're supposed to go not kill yourself with that gun after what you just experienced. (laughs) Like, an absolutely life-altering event. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, it's pretty much all I got to say. It's it's campy enough, it's fun, but it's, it's ultimately not impactful at all. Yeah. So, uh, but since it was my first time watching, I'll get my final thoughts first. It's campy fun, led by an always awesome Danny Glover, uh, but somehow it fails to have anywhere near the same level of danger or interest as the original for me. Um, and because of that, because I still had fun watching it, I did give it a 52. Um, it would be it would be one that I, like, I, now the more I think about it, I did have enough fun watching it that I would put it in my collection. Just to say, hey, this movie's fun to watch, not because it's good, but because we're going to sit here and we're going to make fun of it. Depending so. on how good Prey is, I would be interested to see what the box set looks like. I am 100%... Okay, so if Prey succeeds, which I hope it will, the fact that the, the fact that it's on Hulu means that more people will have access to it, which is awesome. Um, I hope that it really works out, because if, if it works that there is a, uh, a First Nations character and they're able to do it well, I want to see a Samurai versus Predator movie. They need to make it happen. Yeah, that could be. I'd love to see it just go through the generations. Yeah. There was a fan yeah. film on YouTube somewhere that was a predator that was hunting a crusades party. And it was like a, a group of Christians and a group of Muslims that had to fight together against the predator. And it was such a cool concept. I want to see more historical predator movies. like cool. yeah. World War One, like trenches. They have to run from the predator. Like Napoleonic Wars, Cold War. You know, yeah. like like Zulu Nation era where like the British were fighting the Zulus like just the, anything would be super fantastic just not more of that the predator is who killed JFK it'd be cool <laughs> have him up on the grassy knoll like you know with the shoulder cannon in a babushka <laughs> that's how he got away um, but yeah your uh, yeah, final I thoughts think this, I think this movie is very mediocre it is nowhere near the first one uh, I have th- definitely seen this movie the least amount of times out of all of these, uh, and the other two are very minimal as well f- that are coming up, but this is definitely my least, like, interesting one, I feel, uh, and because of that, I gave it a 42. A 42, alrighty. Well, that is gonna bring us to the third movie in the franchise, which is Predators, plural, uh, released in 2010, it was directed by Nimrod Antal and stars Adrian Brody, Lawrence Fishburne, and Topher Grace. A group of elite warriors parachute into an unfamiliar jungle and are hunted by members of a merciless alien race. So you've already kind of spoiled your thoughts uh, regarding this movie. Uh, so do you want to expand on it a little bit before we dive into spoilers? 
Sure, yeah, I think this movie definitely was more of a redo of the first one. I get that it's supposed to be a sequel, and it kind of is in certain aspects, but it feels like... I, I like it fe- This is just the first movie for the new generation. Like, it's the same lines, same concept. They add a little bit of a spin to it that it's like a more manufactured scenario, uh, which adds a little bit of depth to it, but for the most part, it's the same thing it's a bunch of elite guys and girls put into the middle of a forest and they get hunted by a predator and oh predator is plural uh but yeah it just feels super generic and i don't think any of the acting really works in this one i found this one to be probably the most boring uh in terms of just pacing and stuff so yeah just kind of whatever interesting i hard disagree nice (laughs) it's been a while since we've had this this is my favorite movie um, oh, wow. Because of the premise alone, I think. Um, the fact that they, you know, continually take the most elite warriors that Earth has. Like, I, I have to disagree with you. It is not a redo of the first movie. Like, it, it feels more... Because, like, the first movie was a, like, was a team in a location, and the Predator wasn't even the objective, right? Like, it was... They were there for the contact girl. Yeah. This one... They're not on Earth, first off, which is really cool. Um, well, but it looks exactly like Earth, though. So. It's a jungle. Yeah. So that's why the Predator was at home in the first one. You got it? Or, like, you know, you got to think about it. Um, but, but, like, they didn't do anything to make it off planet. Like, it's literally just. It's a jungle. Yeah. <laughs> Except for a couple plants, you know, a yeah. couple animals here and there. Um, that the props team worked really hard on. <laughs> well, they, they were practical. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I know that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. But I, I just, I think this movie, I enjoyed the characters more too. They're a little, wow. they're, a, they're a little wooden. I will admit, they're a little wooden. But there was like, a, there was enough diversity in, in like who and what they were, the weapons they had, their temperaments, the way they, you know, the way they can like compose themselves, was different than just a troop of green berets or whatever. Hmm. But for me, again, this movie really succeeds because of the premise. And it makes sense that the Predators would take the humans off of their environment and put them into an alien one and just hunt them. Like, Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think the concept, like I, that was kind of what I was saying, is that little bit of spice to the story that they added definitely is an interesting concept. But what that op- all the doors that opened for them, they didn't walk through any of them, in my opinion. They set up this really cool concept and then filmed the the generic scene again. Like, the final battle is literally the same. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole, They're, like, yeah. oh, you can't see me because of heat and because I cover myself. Like, it's exactly the same thing that happened in the first one. Yeah, and, and to me, it didn't, it, like, again, you know, I usually I'm critical of this and I would say that it's, like, a redo or, like, but to me, this one kind of felt like an homage because in the in the dialogue earlier in the movie, Alice Braga tells him how Dutch was able to get through the Predator's defenses. And then Adrian Brody used that knowledge. So it's not so much a redo as much as it is, I'm taking what worked before and then changing it. And it doesn't go well. He's, he hears the heartbeat and he sees the heartbeat behind the tree. So like, it's not exactly the same. I won't disagree that it definitely feels similar. 100%. Yeah. But like I, I think if you showed someone the the two back to back one and three, like someone new to movies that hadn't seen either, it would feel extremely repetitive to them to watch the third one. If you did it like one then three, yes. But I think That's because if you I went side more by side, they would line up very very closely. Yeah, and I think for me because I watched them in order, I went from jungle to city to jungle to Midwest or whatever it is in the fourth one. Like yeah. there was enough differentiation that maybe for me because I you know I do really like the original it felt like a return to what I had expected or like what, yeah, I, I, what just, I wanted. I just, yeah, and I just feel like it didn't try. I guess this is what it comes down to: is it just didn't try anything new. Mm-hmm. It felt like it was part of like just oh like this worked in the '80s or whatever the first one came out in. Like this worked then. Let's just do that. Like let's make money on that now, and that's what it felt like to me. Yeah, I can definitely see it. Yeah, and I can see your side too. That they did, 
they did try they set up a lot of new stuff like i said they opened a lot of doors and to me they just didn't walk through any of them yeah. like they didn't commit to any of these really neat theories like i think the concept for predators would have been better as a tv show with a different group of people every episode or every season yeah, but that way it's more like yeah this is a regular thing that happens they they bring people here yeah. to hunt them i think that would have been better than just seeing one group again in a jungle i would have wanted to see it or even like in the beginning let's set that up and then show me a jump in time of all the groups that didn't make it yeah like let's just give me a little bit more and i think i would have really liked the movie yeah like if we like we we saw obviously like the samurai swords that the yakuza member picks up but like it would have been cool yeah. to see like some world war ii people or like some world war one people or like like someone from a different era, like their their clothing or something. But we just got a lot of like modern stuff, which, you know, it, it, for the lore's sake, it doesn't do well. But I think my biggest problem with this franchise as a whole is that it was one it was one movie with an idea that was good for what it was, and then they tried to do too many different things yeah. with it. I will argue the two movies where they're not in a jungle are the two worst in the franchise because they they Three. they kind of uh, they strayed from the initial core concept which is to be hunted right yeah. the second movie they never felt hunted the fourth movie they don't feel hunted we'll get there yeah. in a minute but this one they at least were being hunted which that is the primal fear that this franchise should draw from for me at least yeah i agree that this is my second best out of the franchise for sure like again because it does do a lot of things right it's just uh, to to nitpick it is that it just Someone else already did it right, mm -hmm. and it's the first movie. So yeah, this yeah. one is it's good, but it's the same thing. So it's tough to be like, to me, it's like very little points for originality. It's that's and that's why I called it a remake or a reboot or a redo. Like I feel mm -hmm. like it's it's updated a little bit. It's got some new skins on it. It looks a little better. It's a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more complex of a plot. Uh, or a little bit more of a complex plot that is a little bit more direct in a sense of what it wants to achieve. Uh, and I think it works a lot. It just, yeah, it just feels regurgitated a lot for me. Yeah, fair enough. And I do want to point out that I, when I originally saw this movie and the time I saw it after that, I did not like this movie. For some just on reason, this rewatch. But just on this rewatch, it ticked all the right boxes for me. Also, I'd like to point nice. out the consistent use of the Predator music in all four movies is perfect. And it makes it kind of, it does tie it all in together. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's literally the same, just like reworked score every time. Exactly. So, uh, but let's go ahead. Uh, we got another movie to cover. So, Adrian, what are your final thoughts for Predators? I mean, we've kind of heard what you have to say, but distill it down into one sentence. Yeah, feels like the first movie, but it adds a little bit of spice that it doesn't capitalize on. So the whole jambalaya pot doesn't quite come together for me and feels like something I've eaten before. And because of that, I gave it a 50. Fair enough. Um, I said that I actually enjoyed this movie far more than I thought I would have. Uh, it's more in line with the original, and it has an awesome premise, but some woodenness and some questionable choices prevent it from being like a truly great movie or like something I would recommend. Um, that being said, it is still my favorite of the series, so it does edge out the original by getting a 78. Wow. So uh, that might be controversial, but... That may be. I'll rope it back in with the next one. So... Uh, the fourth film in the franchise is The Predator, uh, released in 2018. It was directed by Shane Black and stars Boyd Holbrook, Sterling K. Brown, and Olivia Munn. When a young boy accidentally triggers the universe's most lethal hunter's return to Earth, only a ragtag crew of ex-soldiers and a disgruntled scientist can prevent the end of the human race. That does not feel like an accurate <laughs> synopsis for the movie. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I... Had seen this movie uh, right when it was like right after it was released onto like Blu-ray and after uh, after its theater run. I didn't see it in theaters, uh, unfortunately, because I had heard so many bad things about it. Um, and so I had watched it when it came out, and I was like, mm, okay. And then rewatching it this time, it just it like this one like. It sucks, because Shane Black is in this movie. Shane Black, or he directed the movie, excuse me. In the first one, He yeah. was in the first one, and he's written incredible movies like Lethal Weapon, and he also did uh, The Nice Guys, which I really love that movie. This movie really blows. And I, and it's, I, I thought originally it was hard to figure out why, 
but it actually is pretty easy, and we'll dive into it more with spoilers. I do want to know, though, if it was studio interference and interference that ruined this movie. Yeah, I think it was a lot of the studio going, oh, but this is what's trending now. Like, you have to put this in. Yeah. Uh, and I especially feel that way about um, Key, Keegan-Michael Key being in the movie. He he was actually one of the characters that I enjoyed. But I think, yeah. Well, and just I because of the fact that he's in the movie, yeah. Yeah, like, I think that he, like, Key and Peele was definitely trending. Like, they were definitely the biggest comedy thing going on when this movie came out. Or I think this was and, right afterward, yeah, because I think this is the same year as Get Out, so it was probably right yeah, after they were, on their, they were both, like, super desired. Uh, and I think that the, he's in this solely flat, and he does do a good job because he's pretty good. But I think I would agree that that leans me towards that, that uh, studio interference definitely made a lot of choices for this movie. And also, I really like Olivia Munn. I like her in a lot of the movies that she's in. I feel like she's not, like, the best actress ever, but she really knows what her characters are yeah. and when she plays them she typically does a good job and i actually liked her in this movie too i think she was one of the more driving characters uh there's a scene in particular where uh, uh she has to escape the predator but she has to go through a uh decontamination process before the doors open and that's probably one the only stressful scene in this whole movie but uh it's definitely like i feel like that's a great scene and she acts it phenomenally like that is a horrifying experience to be that close so yeah i really those two people i think really carried a majority of it sure absolutely well, let's go ahead and dive into spoilers though so spoiler alert for the predator um and first off i'm gonna address the scene you just talked about because uh i had a major problem with it <laughs> so real quick actually a bit of a of a thing about the podcast if we spoiler alerted the first one and they didn't stay do we have to spoiler alert them all? I, I, I don't know. Okay, I just, just do it as an abundance of caution, is all <laughs> I do. <laughs> sure, we most don't people, most people I know who listen to podcasts just listen to it because they want to hear our voices. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, the, so the scene in which Olivia Munn arrives at the facility, the first time she gets decontaminated with uh, Gary Busey's son, which is perfect casting and leads yeah. more into the kind of universal uh, canon of the movie. Um, like, obviously, you know, they got to get decontaminated. And the the second time she goes in as she's trying to escape, yes, it's tense, but it really felt like a reason, hey, let's get Olivia Munn naked again. Well, but they don't show anything. No, but it just, like, that's what it feels like. Kind of like, mm. like, the studio was like, yeah, but, you know, what if we, uh, what if we, you know, make her go, she has to go through decontamination again. Emergency procedure, emergency procedures be damned you know all the alarms are blaring but they still got to go through this one little funnel yeah i i see what you're saying but i also think it worked really well because the predators have a code where they, they don't hunt anything that is not a threat to them yeah so and i think like when the predator looks at her and she's naked and frail and very afraid it it kicks into that code where it doesn't attack her because she's not a threat Granted, but I feel like if she was in her clothes, she still would have been fine. She wasn't armed. Yeah, but I think it's that she was so vulnerable, like she was so afraid. Maybe. Because like you think there were a lot of scientists in there that weren't threatening necessarily, but he killed them. I'd have to rewatch the sequence because I I don't remember like how many of the scientists died. Like like, <laughs> like well no like Gary Busey's character was fine, like he was he was scratched or whatever. He wasn't dead. Mm, I guess so. I'm not Gary Busey, oh, his son. Died. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, diving more into the movie, I do want to talk about the thing that everyone jokes about this movie for. It is awesome that we get representation in this movie of people who are on the spectrum. Yep. But the fact that the predator, the hybrid predator, this super new, predator, this super predator, wants to steal. Uh, was his name MacArthur or whatever the main character it's, it's so bad I forgot um, to steal his son to engineer autism into the predator race is kind of meme worthy <laughs> like yeah I think that what they were going for is the is whole the intelligence like, yeah the, and that is a theory that they are much that people with autism are, are at a, operating at a much higher level yeah. than other people are and that's why they seem different because they're 
much smarter than everybody else. Mm-hmm. But I feel like this was like jumping the shark a bit on that concept yeah. and being like, well, what if that's the only resource aliens want from us? Is our autism. Is our autism. <laughs> It definitely, yeah, it definitely feels like it jumps the shark a little bit. It feels it, inappropriate. It, like, it feels odd. Like, when yeah. they when that comes to light, it's uncomfortable. It's, like, a very strange concept. And I think it's worth it to note, too, that people that are joking about this movie saying that the Predators are trying to engineer autism into the race, they're not joking about the autism itself. Like, it's awesome, again, that we are getting representation. Absolutely. In a movie, even though the, the actor doesn't actually have autism. Um... But like, which is a shame because now nowadays, if this were made now, they probably would. We're very, it's yeah. gotten a lot better. But it's like, it's just the fact that it just feels so forced, and then it was like, it was just a plot point from the beginning. They couldn't just leave it that the kid was, you know, had autism and was very intelligent. That's how he was able to op- operate everything. Like that, that could have been fine on its own. But it's just, yeah, a, it's a it- weird choice. Yeah, it was super weird. I think it lends itself to the thing that we see a lot, which we're finally getting away from, but was about, uh, like, sexual orientation representation in film and people having gay relationships and how, for a while, when they were in movies, it was, like, a big deal, and they made sure to call out that this person was was with another man or with another woman. Like, they would, it was, like, the highlight of a film was, like, we have a gay couple in it. And now we're getting to the point where gay couples just exist in film without being called out. Like, Lightyear is an example. There's other movies like uh, even Captain Marvel. uh, Or not Captain Marvel. uh, Multiverse of Madness, where she is a member of the LGBT community, and it's not highlighted. It's not like a big deal. And this movie felt like at a time where that's kind of the... They were applying that same logic to autism, where it's like, okay, here's this person, and let's make the whole movie about that we included the this in our film like it yeah. just seemed really over the top really egregious and yeah like i like i said it's distasteful and it's kind of rude and and trying to use that to cover up the fact that the story of the film just isn't good that yeah. there's a rogue predator that has gone away from the predator society to give us a weapon to fight back because we'd know when any ship enters the atmosphere invisible and when some group of soldiers are in Guatemala or whatever having to deal with it. It's such a ridiculous premise that it really makes the movie suffer. But, like, again, like we said, I'm glad they're going back to the roots with Prey. Hopefully. Hopefully. But this was just really not the right way to do it. Um, yeah, and I think that uh, this movie, I think, could have been fine without the whole autism thing at all not that i'm not for inclusion yeah. i just the way that they did it i would have rather than not i feel like it made no sense and it just didn't feel good to me yeah definitely so but i mean kind of on the positive side there are some fun characters in this movie uh like we said olivia munn's character is actually pretty decent given the, yeah. the overall plot of the movie keegan michael key and thomas jane their character and their their characters and their relationship is pretty awesome <laughs> You know, the fact yeah, that they just, like, nod at each other to shoot each other at the end, like... I think it's tough that this is one of those things where, like, even the best acting can't make up for the script. Oh, it's yeah. just, it's, like, impossible. Yeah, this movie felt broken into the foundation. Yeah. Yeah, like, and you can't just, you know, throw a paint job on a crumbling building and say that it's new. Like... And you can't just give us, like, a new-looking predator and expect us to not... Like, the shiny new armor doesn't distract us from a terrible film altogether. <laughs> I mean, even the idea of a new hybrid predator is interesting, yeah. but they don't do anything with it. It's the same as the last one to me. Like they, There was a lot that this movie was like, it seems like he had a lot of really good ideas and then the studio was like, well, you have to catch this person and you have to incorporate this into it and you have to make sure you are inclusive. And it just got a little away from everybody. Definitely. Yeah, so there's not much else I have to say about this movie, though. Like, it's. Yeah. I'm not going to say, like, don't watch it. Like, if you like the Predator series, I feel like you should still check it out. There are nods to the other films, and it is canon. So, like, at least that. It's, it's, I, I would say it's an unfortunate part of watching the whole series. Yeah. Um, but I do have to go over the best part of this movie. And that is Sterling K. Brown's villain, uh, which. I just think he's having so much fun, 
like playing the role. Yeah. Like he's like this fanboy, but goes out in the most cheap and just like the stupidest reason ever. Yeah, and I really like Sterling K. Brown too. Like I've in This Is Us, I think he's really good. There's a lot of movies that I really like with him in it. Yeah. It just looks to the left and the gun goes off for some reason. It doesn't make any sense. And and I feel like this is one of those things where like if we could get like a Snyder cut of like with the original vision, that would be cool. Cause I feel like it's not this isn't what was storyboarded. It doesn't yeah. feel that way. Like it feels really chopped together and odd, especially the further the movie goes on. Mm-hmm. Like it just seems to really open up a bunch of cans and it's like, where's all this going to go? Yeah. And it, it doesn't go anywhere. It just, they start throwing tomatoes at the wall and it's, it's rough. It definitely feels like, you know, they got Shane Black because Shane Black is a name that was in the first one and he's done a lot of good stuff. And they're like, you have clout, you can make this better, right? When the movie feels like it could have been made by anyone. Yeah, he has zero touch on it. It, Like, it doesn't feel anything. It doesn't feel anything like The Nice Guys or any other film he's done. So it just feels weird. But... At the end of the day, let's go ahead and go over those final thoughts. So, for uh, The Predator, I said, aside from a few fun characters, The Predator is a sad yet fun attempt. Uh, I, fun, in quotation marks. There is some fun to be had. Uh, attempt to breathe life into the franchise that suffers from pacing issues, story issues, and abundance of why questions. Um, so, with that, I gave the movie a 35. That's exactly... Oh, no. Sorry, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I gave this movie a 45. Uh, oh, okay. Wow, when you said 35, it literally, like, my brain was like, that's the same number. You really think uh, this is better than Predator 2? Just out of curiosity? Because I feel like we, you didn't really have anything positive to say about this one. I guess I compared it against itself. If I was oh, comparing fair, it... fair, 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 fair. Yeah, I was comparing it against... I'll stick with it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a... I think... Cause, maybe because it's just newer, like, it definitely feels more like an updated film... Sure. Uh, that has a couple of those things going for it. Like, it feels higher quality, but that doesn't justify a lot of the things that we talked about. Oh, yeah. uh, but it d- definitely does feel like a more approachable movie for today's age, for sure. You could definitely uh, watch this without any prior knowledge. Yeah, whereas, like, the fir- the second one, you actually, I feel like you do need to kind of know what's going on. Uh, but this one definitely has a little bit of that standalone quality. But yeah, it's absolutely not good. Like, I don't. I I also say this about the second one. I don't think you need to see it unless you're going through the series as a whole. Like I don't think they're overtly relevant. Yeah, they're unfortunate parts of watching the whole thing. Like we yeah. like I said before. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's gonna take us through the Predator franchise. Be on the lookout. We'll have our review for Prey in August. Uh, definitely, we definitely need to do a review for yeah. that. Um, but I did want to share a fun fact uh, about the series. That I found while I was uh, getting all the information for the films. Um, according to critic scores, specifically Metacritic, do you know which of these four movies is the highest rated? I just guess the first one. No. Is the it the high- third one? The third one, Predators, is the highest rated, followed by The Predator, followed by Predator 2, and Predator, the original, is the lowest rated of the four. I I think now, if critics like if, if if Metacritic you know voters or reviewers looked at the movies again, I think that would change. But it's man, used, Metacritic's like your bible. That's crazy. It's just really interesting to me because like at the time when it came out, Predator was like Predator was a flop with critics, but it, it did well with fans, and it was like like it was a cult kind of I want to say a cult classic, but it it got that status pretty, you know, not as soon as it came out, but kind of afterward. And then Predator 2 was obviously just a cash grab to try and, you know, get in on the franchise. And then the later two were trying to get in on the nostalgia of it. So it's it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I just wanted to share that because I found that very, very interesting. That is interesting. Um, but uh, that is going to bring us to the end of this episode. Adrian, uh, where can people find us online if they want to follow us? The Drive Back Podcast anywhere, whether that be on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, any other podcasting app, or Instagram, The Drive Back Podcast. That is absolutely right. Uh, Next week, 
we are going to have a back-to-back, -back, which is where we look at two movies, either sequels or remakes or whatever other combination of things those might be. Um, next week, we're going to be taking a look. We're, we're diving back into sci-fi horror. Uh, with uh, yeah, it's a woo, roller coaster ride. We're going down the hill. Uh, we are watching the thing and the thing. Uh, two movies that are uh, they're not necessarily the, the, the newer one is considered a reboot, but it's actually a prequel uh, yeah. to the original. Uh, so we're going to be comparing the two of those to see which one is better. It's going to be pretty easy to. I'll figure tell you that's right now for anyone that wants to get ahead and watch it. One of my favorite. Meme quotes from any movie ever is in the first The Thing. And for you, Garrett, if you, when we start the next episode, if you can tell me what you think my favorite meme quote is, uh, I won't do anything, but it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn, I don't get a cookie or something? Alrighty. Well, yeah, so The Thing is going to be next week for Back to Back. To back. That is going to be on the docket. Um, those are going to be available to rent pretty much anywhere. I don't think they're streaming anywhere. Um, I do own one, so it's going to be easier for me. But um, That is going to be it for this episode. Uh, make sure you follow us on all of our social medias. I started streaming on Twitch again, so you can come and pester me about my opinions or tell me that I'm wrong or just ask for recommendations. I'll put the link to that below in the YouTube video. For the audio, it's twitch.tv slash thick with two C's as Thanos, the character 666. Um, other than that, that is going to be it. So we will see you all next week with The Thing. Have a great rest of the day. And uh, this is coming out on a holiday. So on 4th of July. Happy, uh, happy 4th of July if you're celebrating this year. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Drive Back. Make sure to be on the lookout for new episodes every Monday. And make sure to follow us on social media.